My glasses are back on for this video because I will be consulting my laptop again, so I apologize in advance for any glare that you see. I'm doing a video where I'm going to scroll through my Goodreads account and compare my ratings with other people's ratings and see what books I've rated really high, that other people have rated low, and vice versa. This is something that I saw on Kayla from Books and Lala's channel several, several months ago, and it was super fun, and I loved it, and I decided to do it today. She split it up into two videos, but I'm just gonna do it in one video first I'll check out my high rated books that are typically rated low average rating and then the opposite. I'll see what books I hated that the popular consensus is that it was good. So I'm kicking it off with my high rated items. So my standard is going to be about 3.5. Um, I think generally on Goodreads if something is rated above 3.5 then it's like decent but if it's rated 3.5 or lower I tend to like feel like oh people don't really like that very much so that's gonna be my standard if it's 3.5 or lower that's what I'm gonna stop at um, so we'll look at first we'll look at the books that I've rated really high all my five stars and we'll scroll, th scroll through and see which of my five stars have 3.5 or lower ratings on Goodreads. Okay, Final Empire, Lies and Her Monsters, Little Mermaid, Alex Approximately, Curse Catcher. Okay, The Curse Catcher, which is right, I mean it's 3.59. I'm kind of surprised by that. It's The Curse Catcher is a short story or a novella or something. It's like 88 pages long. It's very, very short. It's only available on ebook. I read it like two years ago. I've since reread it and the first time I read it I gave it five stars and on reread, I would probably knock it back to four. It definitely was less impressive the second time around. I noticed that it like wasn't all that I had worked it up to be, but it was still like it was an 88 page book. I mean, novella, whatever, short story. It was good. Like for so few pages, it was good. So I'm kind of surprised that that one's rated so low. I kind of broke my own rule there because it's technically like 3.59, but it's like right there. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised that people don't like that one more. Okay, By Your Side, Beauty of Darkness, P.S. I Like You, Letters to, ooh, Letters to the Lost Represent, You've Got High Ratings, Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan, Tell Me Through Things, Picture of Dorian Gray, Finding Audrey, all right. I mean, not that many books so far that have a low rating, Palace of Mirrors, Shadow Kiss, Great, ooh, Great Hunt is pretty low. <laughs> Um, I knew that though. Great Hunt is one book that I really, really loved. I have it marked as five read five stars because that was my original star rating. I since rereading it I backed it up to like a four. Um, but I mean, I know because I used to shove this down my channel throat back in 2016, I know that not everybody loves this book and a lot of people read it and didn't love it as much as I did but man I still think it's solid I don't know 3.66 ouch 3.99 3.87 yeah um my five star books are generally pretty well appreciated okay let's switch things around low ratings on top Ooh, hoo, hoo. okay so let's hold on let's start a standard um, I'm gonna say four star and higher because a four star like if you've got four stars that's like people like it so four star and higher is gonna be the standard for my like we're starting at the one stars and let's just kick it off with the dream thieves by Maggie Steve Otter book two in the Raven cycle I've only read the first three books I still haven't finished it I know I know I should but I just don't have any motivation to I loved book one, The Raven Boys. I hated book two, The Dream Thieves. And then I really enjoyed book three. And I think the reason is because this series is a little bit all over the place. Like you start off with like a, a story and like characters and like you've established something and you've spent a lot of time building up. Like it's a really, book one is a really slow build and you built up this relationship with these people, it's really character driven. And then book two veers off like way far left and follows a totally like a character that wasn't like he was relevant, but he wasn't a main focus of book one. And then you follow him and it's like not even about the main plot that we established in book one. And it's like it just takes you totally far left. And um, I know like a lot of people love this character. He's like everybody's favorite. I like him, but I don't love him and I didn't want a whole book about him. And while his story was mildly interesting, the big twist 
I predicted. <laughs> so like it was fine, except that like there was never anything shocking and so it just felt like I wasted my time. Now I should preface this by saying I was in a reading slump at the time that I read the dream, the dream Thieves and I really wasn't liking anything that I was reading. So if I reread this, I probably wouldn't give it one star. It would probably get a higher rating than one. But I feel like book two is like one of those where people either love it or they hate it. Like it's not, it's not one that everybody loves, even if you love the series, because it veers so far left and then book three gets back on track. So I feel like, I feel justified in my opinion, but I know that a lot of people like, like book two is their favorite. <laughs> okay, Cursed Child deserves a lower rating. Why does it have 3.72? Anna and the French Kiss deserves, oh my gosh, Anna and the French Kiss, it, it meets my standard. It's a 4.05, what? Oh no, Anna and the French Kiss is absolute trash. It is a book about a girl who wants to be a film critic, a highly acclaimed, like the best female film critic out there, but she doesn't even know that Paris has cinemas. What? It's like the film capital of the world and she's like, wait a second, I can watch movies here? So it's like this American girl who is sent off to like a boarding school off in Paris and she falls in love with the first guy that she meets who is like the most boring typical YA love, romance, love interest ever written and then it's a whole book about them cheating with each other because he has a girlfriend that he like has a really good established relationship with that he actually cares about but then he falls for Anna and so he stops caring about her and so he just starts cheating on her because he's a spineless worthless human and Anna hates this girl because she's dating the guy he likes not she likes not because this girl is like mean or rude or anything negative but the book the narrative of the book paints this girlfriend as like this girl that we should hate and because Anna hates her so deeply and like you're meant to villainize the love interest girlfriend when the whole time she's doing nothing wrong she's sweet and she trusts her boyfriend and he's cheating <sighs> okay all right okay the upside of unrequited this this meets it 4.03 average star rating. I gave it one star. I technically gave it 1.5 stars, but I'm not sure what that 0.5 star was for. Um, this book just didn't make sense to me. It, I, For the life of me, I don't understand the hype for the upside of Unrequited. It is a story about a girl who has, I don't remember, a ton of unrequited crushes. Her sister um, starts dating someone at the beginning of the book and then like her sister like starts basically blowing her off and not being a good sister at all. And then Molly is the main character. Like she's struggling because she's like got her own internal thoughts and she has anxiety and she's like legitimate struggles. Um, and then she starts liking this guy. And so even though she likes this guy, she decides to not pursue him or let him pursue her. And then she goes after another guy who she's not even interested in and she doesn't even know if he's interested in her. And then it's like this weird, like long, slow plot of Molly, like in her head, liking one guy, but trying to force herself to like this other guy. And then like kind of playing with this guy's head a little bit because she's like hot and cold a lot of times. I don't know, I just didn't get it. Let's move on because I just saw what my next, my next one is Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas. Oh man, let's talk about that one. So Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas is an adult contemporary that was totally awful. I understand why people would like this because I've explained this, like I talked about this one really, really recently, so I feel like a lot of you guys already know my rant on it. So every single character in this book was so inhumanly perfect that I hated them. And the reason they were so perfect is because the author was trying to make us desperately love them so that this big tragic end that we're leading up to throughout the, throughout the entire novel that our hearts would be broken we would cry. I feel like the whole point of this novel like the author was just like I want to make people cry. What's the saddest thing I can think of? I'll make these perfect characters and I'll do that thing. And I hated it because these characters were so annoyingly perfect that I didn't like them and so when the big tragic thing happened I was frustrated because one, I didn't care about these characters because they were so annoyingly perfect, but two, I didn't feel like there was a point to this book other than I want to make my viewers cry, I mean my readers cry, so I'm going to do something tragic and then end the book. I just, I didn't get it. I didn't, it didn't work for me. I understand why people like this because if you love the characters then this would be like such an emotional story, but it was annoying to me. Okay, this video is really really long and I've gotten like over the top salty now, so I feel like I should just end it, but like. 
What a negative place to end things. Wow, I thought this was gonna be fun, and it was fun. I really had fun ranting, but I feel like I just like got so deep negative that maybe this wasn't fun for you to watch. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to like end this on a happy note. I'm sorry for getting extra and for being way over the top salty about some of these books, especially since these are obviously well-loved books, so you probably don't appreciate me trashing your faves. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments why you loved the books that I didn't love that were popular. Keep in mind that me saying I don't like this book is not me saying you're not allowed to like it, nor is it me trying to change your opinion, nor is it even me trying to tell anybody not to read these books because y'all can read whatever you want. I'm really not that invested in your reading life. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna end it negative. I'm really sorry for being so rude. Uh, I post videos every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't know why you would have. I enjoyed filming it though. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.